Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. By the Middle Permian, the synapsids are diversified into a wide array of different forms, ranging from large saber-toothed predators to slow-moving bulky browsers with enormous skulls. However, arguably the most successful, widespread and specios of the synapsid lineages were the Anomodonts. Originating roughly 270 million years ago, this clade contained a staggering amount of species that filled a variety of largely herbivorous niches. A part of Therapsida, the Anomodonts were slightly more derived than the Dinocephalians, and essentially replaced the browsing members of that group during the Middle Permian. Early basal forms tended to be small and quite lizard-like in appearance, with semi-sprawling limbs, relatively long tails and toothy jaws. While there is no direct evidence of this, some species may have been partially furry, given the presence of hair within the coprolites of predatory therapsids. It has also been suggested that these animals were at least somewhat endothermic, given their highly vascularized bones, similar to the more derived cynodonts. As the anomodonts diversified, they gradually increased in size and body mass, developing more rotund bodies for processing plant matter, reducing the length of their tails, as well as losing most of their teeth. Indeed, the most famous members of this clade, the Dicynodonts, would develop largely toothless beaked snouts, superficially similar to those of turtles, although most retained a pair of prominent canine tusks in the upper jaw. In form, these animals were highly diverse, ranging from rat to elephant-sized, although most lineages died out during the end Permian mass extinction. However, the derived Dicynodonts would survive into the Triassic, and lived alongside a variety of early archosaurs, being the largest and most dominant herbivores until the very end of the period, when the early sauropodomorph dinosaurs began to expand in size. It may have been their raised metabolisms that helped Anomodonts survive into the Triassic in the first place, alongside the similarly active Cynodonts. Although they would not make it to the end of the period, instead dying out during the early Ratian stage about 205 million years ago. The reasons for this are still not well understood, although competition with herbivorous dinosaurs and a changing climate may have played a part. The oldest known anomodonts first appear in the fossil record about 270 million years ago, mostly from the northern half of Pangaea, suggesting that this is where the lineage evolved. The most basal member of the entire clade appears to have been the genus Biceridens from the middle Permian of China. A small animal measuring just over one meter or three feet three inches long, it can be considered an anomodont due to the shortness of its skull, elevated zygomatic arches, and the possession of a specialized slicing jaw mechanism for chewing plant matter. Unlike more derived members of the clade, however, Biceridens retained heterodont teeth similar to those of other therapsid groups, a trait that the later Dicynodonts would lose. In fact, it would have more closely resembled the early Dinocephalians in appearance. Other basal anomodonts were similarly toothy animals adapted for feeding on low-growing plants. The South African Anomocephalus was about the size of a pit bull and would have possessed a high-fibre diet, while its close Brazilian relative Tiarodens was larger, being comparable to a wild boar. The most notable feature of this genus were its greatly enlarged upper canines, which were probably used for both self-defense against predators and an intraspecific combat for mates. The more derived Venue coveoidea were generally smaller animals. Indeed, the genus Otcheria possessed a skull that measured just 10 centimeters long, indicating that the entire animal was about the size of a large rat. Even the teeth were somewhat rodent-like, with prominent forward-pointing incisors at the tips of the upper and lower jaws, giving Otcheria a wide Cheshire cat grin when seen from the front. Its close relative, the similarly middle Permian Russian genus Ulmechia, possessed strange bosses on the lower jaw, a feature that emerged multiple times in different synapsid lineages. However, the best known and oddest member of this group was the late Permian Suminia. Also known solely from Russian fossil deposits, this 50 cm long animal was among the oldest known arboreal vertebrates, with strong gripping feet, large eyes, and a possibly prehensile tail supporting this type of lifestyle. Unlike other early anomodonts, Suminia lacked canine teeth, with its posterior premolars and molars being large and leaf-shaped, 
suggesting a diet composed entirely of plant matter. In fact, this odd animal was a forerunner of many later arboreal synaptids alive today, such as primates and squirrels, inhabiting a very different niche to its often bulky and heavy-set cousins. Other early anomodonts were not entirely herbivorous, with the genus Gallicyrus being a small, vaguely lizard-like animal, with a number of anatomical features that are unusual for the group, such as a relatively long neck, narrow jaws, and highly arched back. Its teeth were conical and adapted for piercing the shells of arthropods, being one of the only known anomodonts to feed on other animals. By the Middle Permian roughly 260 million years ago, the incredibly diverse Dicynodonts had branched off from their more basal relatives. This clade is defined by the possession of greatly enlarged temporal openings in the skull to accommodate powerful chewing muscles, with beaked and often toothless mouths, except for a pair of prominent tusks in the upper jaw. Their bodies were short, strong and barrel-shaped, with robust limbs for supporting the animal's weight. In large genera, the hind limbs were held erect, but the forelimbs were often bent at the elbow. Both the pectoral girdle and the ilium were large and strong, while their tails were short and stubby, similar to those of modern hippos. The oldest and most basal member of the group was a genus Eodicynodon, from the mid to late Permian of South Africa. Measuring just 45 centimetres, or about 17 inches long, this genus was a squat herbivore that would have fed on tough, low-growing plants. The tusks in the upper jaw were probably utilised for intraspecific combat, much like in modern musk deer, with the males fighting for access to females. Other basal dicynodonts were generally quite similar in appearance. The widespread endotheodon inhabited most of southern Pangaea between 259 and 254 million years ago, and was about the size of a pig. It too was a stocky, heavily built herbivore, but possessed a prominent hooked beak, which was superficially similar to those of ceratopsian dinosaurs. Like these animals, endotheodon used its mouthparts to slice through tough vegetation. Interestingly, preserved remains of juveniles indicate that young members of this species may have had a more omnivorous and insectivorous diet, then transitioning to full herbivory once reaching adult size. Meanwhile, the clade Dyictodontia became specialised for burrowing fossorial lifestyles, developing cylindrical bodies, short stubby legs, and powerful forelimbs useful for digging. Forms such as Dyictodon and Robertia were small prairie dog-like animals with sprawling limbs. Like modern burrowing rodents, Dyectodonts excavated underground tunnels in which to take shelter and to hide from terrestrial predators. Their burrows could have been used to escape from the heat of the desert, which was the dominant environment on the supercontinent of Pangaea during the late Permian. Inside these burrows, nests have been found, where well-preserved skeletons have been uncovered. They appear to have been quite gregarious animals that raised their young in nursery chambers, suggesting fairly extensive parental care. The first of the truly large browsing Dicynodonts emerged within the clade Dicynodontoidea. Most basal members of this lineage were pig-sized terrestrial herbivores that lacked the burrowing adaptations of the Dyictodonts. Instead, they probably roamed about in the undergrowth, feeding on low-growing gymnosperm plants. Many genera were once thought of as species of the successful South African genus Dicynodon, but have since been split into their own genera. By far the most famous of these animals was Lystrosaurus, from the late Permian and early Triassic. This genus survived through the end Permian mass extinction event, and became extremely common in its aftermath, comprising up to 95% of vertebrate fossil remains at some sites. It ranged across much of Pangaea, with fossil material recovered from South Africa, India, China, Russia, and Antarctica. Four species are known, the smallest of which was about the size of a Scottish terrier, while the largest was comparable to an American black bear. The Triassic species were notably smaller than their Permian ancestors, which suggested a diminutive stature and ability to burrow helped them to survive the worst mass extinction in Earth's history. It has also been found that these animals were able to enter a state of torpor for periods of time, which was evidenced by the preserved growth rings in their tusks. Mummified specimens recovered from the Karoo Basin, and described in 2022, have revealed that the genus had dimpled, leathery, and hairless skin, similar to that of modern elephants. Lystrosaurus was the sister taxon of the most derived lineage of Dicynodonts, 
the Canimaier reforms. These were generally the most massive of all anomadonts, with many forms being comparable to cattle in terms of size. The namesake of the group, Canimaieria, was quite typical, measuring roughly 3 metres or 10 feet long, and possessing a bulky, robust body and prominent beaked snout for slicing through vegetation. The forelimbs were powerfully built, being useful for digging up nutritious roots, while the hind limbs were fully erect and weight-bearing. Dwelling in the early Triassic of the Karoo Basin, Canimaieria was a contemporary of the large predatory archosauriform Erythrosuchus, showcasing the new carnivore-herbivore dynamics of the Triassic. This genus was a relatively basal member of Canimaieriforms, which is demonstrated by the fact that the animal retained canine tusks in the upper jaw. More derived members of the clade gradually lost this trait, with the canines being replaced by large flanges of bone on either sides of the skull. The Middle Triassic Indian genus Wadiosaurus was a good example of this, possessing small reduced tusks in its rather hippo-like head, along with flaring cheekbones, which were likely used as a form of display. Some later forms, such as the large Brazilian Jacalaria, lacked teeth entirely, as did its close relative Ishigualestia from Carnian and Norian age deposits of northwestern Argentina. This massive and robust animal was one of the largest Dicynodonts, being about the size of a large domestic bull and weighing over a tonne. It lived alongside a variety of early dinosaurs, including Eoraptor, Hererosaurus, and whatever Pisanosaurus turns out to be. The only predator in this ecosystem capable of targeting it was a formidable 6 metre long Pseudosuchian Saurosuchus, although juveniles may have fallen prey to Hererosaurus as well. However, the latest surviving Dicynodonts were the closely related Placerians, which were native to Europe, North America and Africa. The most famous of these was the American genus Placerius, thanks to its starring role in the first episode of Walking with Dinosaurs. With two downward-curving tusks in the upper jaw and a robust, bulky body, Placerius would have been a slow-moving, low-browsing herbivore that weighed up to a ton. Found in Carnian and Norian aged rocks up to 218 million years old, this animal inhabited both the Chinle Formation of Arizona and the Pekin Formation of North Carolina. Probably living in social groups, Placerius dwelt alongside a variety of archosauriforms, including phytosaurs, various pseudosuchians, and early dinosaurs. As one of the largest herbivores in the region, Placerius would have had few natural predators, although the Rawasukian Postosuchus would have proved a significant threat. It was once thought that the genus was the youngest known Dicynodont, being the only species to survive into the Norian, although recent discoveries have disproven this. In 2019, a new giant member of the group was described on the basis of remains recovered from southern Poland, dating to between 210 and 205 million years ago. This was the enormous genus Lysowikia, being by far the largest anomadont, standing up to 8.5 feet tall at the hips and weighing somewhere between 4 and 7 tons on average. This is comparable to a modern African bush elephant, with Lisa Wikia being the only known Dicynodont to possess fully erect limbs in order to support its great weight. Like many other members of the group, this animal would have possessed fleshy pads on its feet, somewhat like those of sauropod dinosaurs and elephants. Fossil coprolites associated with the genus suggest that it largely fed on soft vegetation and conifers, although it was also able to incorporate woody plant material during lean times. Interestingly, these coprolites have been discovered in abundant accumulations in areas believed to have been surrounded by still water. These assemblages are similar to discoveries in Brazil, believed to represent communal latrines made by the Dicynodont Dinodontosaurus, and it's possible that Lysowikia may have performed a similar behaviour. Communal latrines are documented in modern gregarious mammals, and support the idea that Dicynodonts like Lysowikia lived in herds, and even suggest that they had complex social behaviour like modern large mammals. The presence of this animal in Ratian deposits has challenged the idea that sauropodomorphs had outcompeted Dicynodonts before the end of the Triassic, with the enormous size of Lysowikia possibly being a response to similar environmental conditions that enabled the growth of early sauropod dinosaurs. In fact, Lisa Wikia held the record as the most massive of all synapsids for an incredibly long time, with comparable forms only developing in ungulate mammals during the Eocene. 
In life, this genus was not immune to predation despite its size, with bite marks preserved on its bones indicating that it was hunted by the large and mysterious archosaur Smok. As far as we know, this giant was the youngest Dicynodont, with the group as a whole dying out just before the end Triassic extinction event. In their place, various lineages of herbivorous dinosaurs would continue to thrive in the Jurassic, becoming that period's dominant plant-eating animals. However, Dicynodonts were amazing animals in their own right, being incredibly widespread and diverse, not to mention being survivors of the worst mass extinction in the history of life on Earth. Thanks for watching everyone. After hearing some requests left in the comment section, I'll be covering a cryptid in the next video, with this being the notoriously unnerving Deloitte's ape and the fraudsters behind its creation. See you again soon. Cheerio.